Hey brothers and sisters, I'm putting this here because I've been seeing commentary different places um, and I wanted to address something in the Bible. If there is a scripture in the Bible that tells us that we could lie to our family and friends because we're afraid of hurting them or upsetting them or we should flatter them and soften the truth because we don't want to upset them. I'd like to see it, but that is not what the scripture says. Jesus says in John 14, 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Jesus also is the spirit of truth. And I want to read to you some scriptures that bear this out. And I'll tell you where I'm going. John fourteen seventeen, Even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but ye know him, for he dwelleth with you, and ye shall be in you. John fifteen twenty six. But when the Comforter is come, whom I will send unto you from the Father, even the Spirit of truth, which proceedeth from the Father, he shall testify of me. Ephesians 5, 9 For the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth. John 1 John 4, 6 We are of God. He that knoweth God heareth, heareth us. He that is not of God heareth not us. Hereby know we the Spirit of truth and the Spirit of error. I want to read Stephen's account of when he was martyred and show how bold he was in speaking to the Pharisees that murdered him. Here's Stephen speaking to them, starting in verse 48 of Acts 7. Howbeit the Most High dwelleth not in temples made with hands, as saith the prophet, Heaven is my throne, and the earth is my footstool. What house will ye build me, saith the Lord? Or what is the place of my rest? Hath not my hand made all these things? Ye stiff-necked and uncircumcised in heart and ears, ye do always resist the Holy Ghost, as your fathers did, so do ye. Which of the prophets have not your fathers persecuted? If they have slain them which showed before of the coming of the just one, of whom ye have now been now the betrayers and murderers, who have received the law, by disposition of angels, and have not kept it. And when they heard these things, they were cut to the heart, and they gnashed on him with their teeth. But he, being full of the Holy Ghost, looked up steadfastly into heaven, and saw the glory of God, and Jesus standing on the right hand of God, and said, Behold, I see the heavens opened, and the Son of Man standing on the right hand of God. Then they cried out with a loud voice, and stopped their ears, and ran upon him, with one accord, and they cast him out of the city, and stoned him, and the witnesses laid down their clothes at a young man's feet, whose name was Saul. And they stoned Stephen, calling upon God, and saying, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Let's look at what the Bible says about flattery. Job 17.5, here's a warning. He that speaketh flattery to his friends, even the eyes of his children shall fail. To keep thee from the evil woman, from the flattery of the tongue of a strange woman. And we also need to look at flattering lips. Psalm 12, 2. They speak vanity every one with his neighbor, with flattering lips, and with a double heart do they speak. Psalm 12, 3. The Lord shall cut off all flattering lips, and the tongue that speaketh proud things. Proverbs seven twenty one. With her, her much fair speech she caused him to yield. With the flattering of her lips she forced him. Let's read Matthew 10, starting in verse 34. Think not that I come to send peace on earth. I came not to send peace but a sword. For I am come to set a man at variance against his father, and the daughter against her mother and the daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law, 
and a man's foes shall be they of his own household. He that loveth father or mother more than me is not worthy of me, and he that loveth son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me, and he that taketh not his cross and followeth after me is not worthy of me. He that findeth his life shall lose it, and he that loses his life for my sake shall find it. And finally, I want to read some scriptures about what the Bible says about liars. 1 Timothy 1.10 For whoremongers, for them that defile themselves with mankind, for men-stealers, for liars, for perjured persons, and if there be any other thing that is contrary to sound doctrine. Revelation 21.8 but the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. And then I want to go to Jude. And I'm going to tell you where I'm going with all this. I'll start in verse 20. But ye, beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost, keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. And of some have compassion, making a difference, and others, save with fear, pulling them out of the fire, hating even the garments spotted by the flesh. Why am I going through all of this? Because I keep seeing comments, not only on YouTube, but in other places, where people are telling others that we should not be telling family and friends, you know, the truth about these jabs because it's judging them or it's condemning them, you know, and, and we just need to love them and, and basically tiptoe around their feelings. Listen, nowhere in the Bible does it say that. It says actually the opposite. Flattery is something that will condemn a person because it's lying. Lying. Liars have their place in the lake of fire. Some people need to know the truth about these jabs if they haven't had it yet, if they're on the fence. What does it say in Jude 23? And others say with fear, pulling them out of the fire, hating even the garments spotted by the flesh, saying that, you know, we shouldn't be preaching a gospel that's condemnation and destruction. People need to know the consequence. The wages of sin is death. There is a way that seems right unto men that leads to death. This is what the scriptures say. We cannot tiptoe around people's feelings because we have to tell them the truth. It doesn't matter who it is. The Bible says we cannot love even our mother or father more than the Lord. We cannot love anyone in our lives more than the truth. Who is the truth? Jesus Christ. He is the spirit of truth. We have to have the spirit of truth, not the spirit of error. So we can't be lying to people because we're afraid to hurt their feelings. God wants us to speak the truth. Did Stephen lie to the Pharisees when he was getting martyred or did he tell them the truth? Did he tell them that they were lost? Did he tell them that they were condemning themselves? He was just speaking the scriptures to them. If you're speaking the scriptures and you're telling somebody, here's what the Bible says. It is not judging somebody. It is not condemning somebody. But we've gotten so accustomed to this lukewarm, Laodicean, fake American Christianity that's just God is all love. He's not a God of wrath. That we think that we have to tiptoe and lie to people to make them feel comfortable. That's compromising. It's evil. It's wicked. It's sinful. And it's lying. And liars do not have a place in the kingdom of God. And liars, the fearful and unbelieving and all liars, go into the lake of fire. We have to sometimes save others with fear, pulling them out of the fire, hating even the garment spotted by the flesh. We cannot lie to people to placate them, to make them feel better. There is a reason why God is allowing some people to be deceived and others not. I am not God. I don't know why. All we have to do is trust that the Lord knows what he's doing. But we cannot compromise by lying to others and lying to ourselves about what is going on here because we're so afraid to hurt them. The Bible says very plainly we will know other believers by their fruit. We know what the fruit of the Spirit is. We know what discernment is. These are things we should know. We can't just because somebody is telling you or you think because you've seen somebody in church that they're a believer. It does not make it so. The Bible says that the tares and the wheat grow up together. Tares look like wheat. If you Google what a tear looks like, it looks like a wheat crop. But it's hollow on the inside. There's nothing there. That's why it gets blown away. It's the wheat that bends down under the weight of the crop. It's heavy. It's full of fruit. It's full of food, the wheat. 
but we cannot lie to people. We cannot tiptoe around their feelings and flatter them because you're flattering people right into hell. You have to be bold. You have to speak the truth because that is what God commands us to do. I'm putting this exhortation on my channel instead of writing responses under comments I see because if it's on my channel, then I can just engage without having to worry about comments being deleted. So that's why I'm doing this here because it also says iron sharpens iron. We have to exhort one another and be bold and speak the truth. Being bold in this last hour should not be hard. The fact that being bold with the truth is hard for some people is alarming and frankly it's sad and disappointing. Are we not soldiers in the most high army? We should all be on fire for the Lord. We should be encouraging one another to be bold and on fire, not be afraid. What does the scripture say? The fear of man is a snare for men. We can't be afraid of what other people might think of us. We have to be bold with the truth, no matter what it is, because the spirit of truth is the Lord. And if we are abiding in the Lord, we have the spirit of truth with us. And he cannot lie. It says God cannot lie. So we should not be lying to others and compromising to make other people feel better. Everyone has their own free will choice to come to the Father through the Son. It says in Romans 1, all are without excuse. Everyone is without excuse. I don't care who it is. And it doesn't matter how old a person is. We've gotten this weird thing in society that we think that just because somebody is elderly, that they're suddenly innocent or given a pass in the eyes of the Lord. And this is not true. If Jack the Ripper lived to be 120 and he didn't repent of his sins, does he get to go to heaven just because he's elderly? No. Every single person must repent of their sins before the Lord. It doesn't matter how old they are, how cute you might think they look. Just because they're old means that the Lord mercifully kept them alive longer to find him. But if they are old and they die in their sins, they go to hell like everybody else who died in their sins. Being old is not a pass or an excuse before the Lord. Every single person is without excuse is what the Bible says. Because the invisible attributes of God are made known to man and made manifest. Creation itself testifies to the existence of God so that we men are without excuse before the Lord. We need to stop making excuses for people. It says to work out our own salvation with fear and trembling. We cannot do that if we're making excuses for people and trying to give them a pass before the Lord. He doesn't ask us to do that and give them a pass. Every single person needs to be washed clean by the blood of the Lamb. It doesn't matter if they've labeled themselves a Christian their whole lives. If they lived an unrepented life, they need to get washed. They can't just say, well, I'm a Christian and I've done X, Y, and Z. Because there are foolish virgins. That's why it says, Lord, Lord, did we not do X, Y, and Z? And he will say, depart from me. I don't even know where you're from and I don't know who you are. So this is just an encouragement to be bold, not to lie, not to compromise. Because you don't want to hurt someone's feelings. We are not supposed to flatter people with lies because liars will have their place in the lake of fire.